Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q1 and FY21 Earnings Conference Call of Intense Technologies Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone pro. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Siddharth Rangmaker from CDR India. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us on Intense Technology Limited's Quarter 4 and FI21 Earnings Conference Call. Today we have with us Mr. C.K. Shastri, Managing Director, Mr. Jan Dwarkanath, Director, Ms. Anisha Shastri, Director, and Mr. F.M. Nayak, CFO of the company. We will commence the opening remarks with Mr. Shastri and Ms. Anisha Shastri, following which we will have an interactive question and answer session. Before we begin, please note that some of the statements made on today's call could be forward-looking in nature, and a note to that effect has been included in the earnings release of the company, which is available on the Stock Exchange website. I would now like to invite Mr. Shastri to give us a brief overview on the company's performance and his views going forward. Over to you, Mr. Shastri. Thank you, Siddharth. Uh, thank you, everyone, for uh, joining today's earnings, uh, earnings call. Uh, appreciate your interest uh, in our uh, in, in, uh, in intense. Uh, I hope and wish you and everyone in your families are uh, fine and safe. Uh, I've never been in the beginning of last year. We never expected that the country would go through this kind of a, uh, a turmoil for such a long period uh, due to COVID, which has really, really impacted every uh, most of us in our families, and we have lost some dear ones. Some of them have got impacted. Some industries faced a brutal uh, uh, impact. Uh, however, fortunately, we were also very nervous, uh, and we were also very, very, uh, uh, you know, uh, we were uh, all anxious. But the first thing which we did, uh, took care is to take care of our employees, safety of employees. On 23rd March of last year, we were the first people we made, and the entire employees worked from home. The infrastructure was created. All everything what was required to be made was uh, provided, and uh, we. The first goal for us was to see that we do a, a complete support to all our existing customers. See that there is a seamless thing because that was one of the first and important decision which we have taken, uh, and was uh, and we were acknowledged by almost 100% of our existing customers for the splendid work. My, uh, my team has uh, done in delivering uninterrupted services and support because as you all know that uh, our uh, solutions are mission critical uh, and uh, they need uh, you know uh, continuous support uh, from uh, us and uh, I'm so pleased to tell you that from that kind of a fear uh, mode we have come out with a uh, very, very satisfying results. Uh, as you all know that we have done 73.83 uh, lakh crores with a bit of 23.16 on a consolidated basis and with a, with a fat of uh, 18.07 crores uh, and uh, that is that accounts for an EPS of 8 rupees uh, and uh, also Consecutively for the third year, we have declared dividend. So we are pleased to uh, tell you that the company is moving in the right trajectory and direction to see that, you know, we perform and improve better than what we do uh, as we go along. We have uh, seen some great traction thanks to pandemic. Uh, what has really happened is that the the IT has seen ups, uh, upside uh, IT business and IT are solutions because everybody is looking towards the digital side of business. 
of course you know on the the uh, how do they digitize and 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 uh, uh, their business processes and we they we found they have found some of our solutions very very apt for such requirements uh, i'm also proud to tell you that our uh, uh, long term managed services uh, engagement uh, has completely come on steady steady state and uh, we are uh, uh, reaping the benefits of it the some of the things uh, we also our platform and our uh, product has been recognized in the aspire leaderboard which is the leading analyst company based out of uk uh, as you all already know that we've been recognized by gartner uh, and uh, gartner magic quadrant in the past uh, our low code platform is also seeing a great traction which is uh, in the in the uh, in the coming years as you know that low code is is uh, the new wave of the it trend which the world is seeing and uh, fortunately we have taken that strategic decision of moving into it uh, in the past and we are seeing some good uh, benefits coming out of it on the some of the things uh, we have improved our cash flows uh, of course you would in from the balance sheet it will be looking a little alarming as most of our uh, uh, our revenues uh, tend to come from the last quarter which uh, we going forward have modulated we have changed our uh, we are changing our engagement models and going about about looking at it from a annuity base revenue so that the predictability uh, increases you will see that uh, trend in the coming uh, uh, you know uh, in the future uh, and i'm happy to uh, you know more than me uh, i would like to hear your opinions your questions please be uh, uh, please be Uh, open uh, and you know be willing to answer everything whatever you would have to to say thank you very much over to uh, anisha would like you do you like to add anything sure sure good afternoon everybody thank you so much for joining this call uh, my voice may be slightly muffled behind the mask but let me assure you spirits are extremely high um over the last 2 years we had uh, there were some very strategic decisions that we wanted to take as an organization uh, three fundamental uh, pillars the first thing was vertical we were very very heavily dependent on telco 2 uh, years back and uh, uh, the telco industry as such was seeing uh, you know a lot of uh, uh, you know uh, dynamism in it uh, and so we decided that we we wanted to i mean given the fact that all our products are vertical agnostic there was no reason why we were so dependent on just one industry so over the last two years we've made the conscious efforts to diversify that uh, and you 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 are seeing that pay off right now um, in the way of we have uh, we have acquired uh, three large private banks uh, in the country uh, a lot of uh, insurance players we have also forayed into utilities uh, this time uh, uh, and government for the first time um so Uh, that's one on the vertical side second was a business model we wanted to get to more predictable revenue models more predictable business models both for the customer and for us uh, so over the last two years we have invested a lot in moving towards uh, either monthly or transactional uh, models and we are seeing that also pay off with our customers the third thing that we focused on was the platform uh, we invested in the platform uh, early on and we continue to invest and grow it and today we are also reaping benefits of uh utilizing that platform to deliver to our customers uh, uh 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 better so these were three strategic initiatives that we had uh, consciously taken three years uh, two years ago and all three of us uh, jens uh, shastri and i are extremely committed to continue working on this um to ensure that uh, you know we we go to the next level soon thank you thanks jens would you like to say something jens Uh, in fact uh, both anisha and you have uh, uh, more or less hello? Uh, echo, uh, both anisha and you hello? have more or less echo. hello oh, uh, can uh, you hear me mr shastri we can hear mr can you hear us yes we yeah. can hear you 
uh, both Anisha and uh, Shasti have more or less echoed uh, our views, and we, uh, we stay committed to uh, the path that we always have stated uh, we have been taking. And uh, uh, I, I think, I think uh, for us, we believe while we believe that uh, we were, uh, the company was always in the right direction, I think from from uh, from a result and a metric perspective, uh, I hope I hope that. You as our larger partners and stakeholders into our business also kind of appreciate and acknowledge that, uh, yes, probably uh, this uh, marks the turnaround uh, from, from your own, from your uh, individual uh, perspectives. And uh, what we look forward uh, from you in future is a lot more support and a lot more empathy. And uh, so, uh, what we, we can promise is we'll stay true to the course and see that uh, uh, the uh, your company does as well for you as uh, it, uh, uh, it 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 is destined to thank you so much thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Anyone who would like to ask a question, you may press star and one at this time. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Sudhir Veda from Right Time Consultancy. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, congratulations uh, uh, sir, for your good results. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, hello, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I'm, you're audible. Uh, see, when Anisha ji is saying that, uh, you know, and you have written the best note too, uh, it is a mission critical uh, operation which you are doing in telecom, banking, and insurance. So if you can throw some more color on that, what kind of service uh, do you render in three verticals? Uh, that yeah. is the question number one. And the second question is, uh, what is the growth outlook for the current year? Uh, what kind of growth and margin you are seeing uh, in, in this year? And, uh, and uh, uh, our cash flow from the operation is very poor. So what steps we are taking to improve that? And yeah, uh, so the, there are three questions. Uh, one is uh, the mission critical aspect of it. We are an enterprise uh, product solution. So the thing is that, uh, you know, we uh, we send bills, we take, make payments, we have digital engagement, your policies are processed and sent out to you in insurance, your credit card statements and your your listings are banks are, are, are there and then we do revenue reconciliation uh, we also uh, do customer onboarding for example in in one of our large uh, telcos uh, in in today we are onboarding about 1.3 million customers a day which means that you know if you if you are onboarding this, it, it, if you are if it stops for even half an hour, your revenues get impacted. Similarly, if your bills don't go and the payments don't happen, then the, the business gets impacted. And if you have your digital engagement, that is your you know transactional today's world of digital, every step of a purchase or a, or, a, or action in any customer takes is informed digitally through mobile, through, uh, through SMS, through email, through the website, the omni-channel uh, thing, WhatsApp. Uh, through WhatsApp. And when it comes to uh, the next question which you put is uh, on the cash flows. Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Is it Sudhir? Uh, yeah. uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Sudhir. Because of our heavy working capital side, and, um, uh, high receivable, our cash flow from operation is uh, very poor. So, you can throw some light and how, what steps yeah. we are taking to improve that. 
yeah see some of our uh, clients themselves you know large clients uh, uh, you know we have uh, agreements of 120 days and so on and so forth we are looking at and all of them are blue chip com companies more than triple a rated companies whereas uh, we are also looking at um, you know doing the bill discounting factoring to see that you know that is improved even otherwise we are uh, renegotiating and contracting this thing you would see that this year uh, we have already for example you know when uh, uh, in the first quarter itself we have almost collected about uh, 40 plus uh, crores from uh, in the uh, in the in the quarter uh, as we speak so we are on top of it it is uh, Uh, so uh, will I hope uh, and we we are working on improving uh, the the cash flow performance. Great. And the current year's growth outlook, if you can share. Sir, uh, it can only improve. It can only go get better, uh, 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 and we are working towards that. Uh, we are also as ambitious as uh, you all are. We are also this thing. I would. Uh, like not like to give any uh, any guidance, but definitely it will be much better than what it uh, what this year you have seen as. And sir, last question: Are we doing any government uh, work project? Yes, we are doing not directly, but through system integrators, we are doing uh, one in uh, Philippines for a large uh, uh, Supreme Court, uh, and uh, the other in in India. And uh, PSU also. Great, great. So thanks, thanks for the opportunity. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rajendra Shah from Fidelity Management and Services. Please go ahead. Uh, Shastriji, uh, congratulations on the outstanding result. Uh, but uh, from from the from what are the three applications or uh, things that would be uh, Combination of high high volume and high profit, and with geographies. Sir, currently, uh, if you really look at it, the you know our digital platform, that is the low code platform, is one thing which we are seeing a big uh, promise. Apart from that, uh, we also have using that is a new thing which we had added to our portfolio. Our digital onboarding, our digital major. Uh, traction we are getting is for digital engagement, especially with the uh, uh, with uh, uh, you know the COVID and pandemic. The, there is a lot better traction coming for digital engagement. And on the uh, the B two B B two B customer experience, which we are seeing, we are also seeing the traction. But that is large transformation project, which typically it is. Uh, so that is about the three flagship uh, solutions which we are uh, uh, looking at. As far as geography is concerned, typically till last year, uh, last to last year, we were always doing a 51, 49 percent, uh, 51 India, 49 percent overseas. But this year, the tilt is more towards the the domestic side. Uh, 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 there is. Uh, uh, the tilt in revenues it is 70 30 nevertheless we are making our investments you know, europe is our uh, next uh, europe and middle east africa are the good this thing hopefully today we say that you know we have customers across four continents in over 40 uh, in for over 40 countries we right from fiji island in the uh, in the east to Mexico in the uh, in the extreme right, we have uh, our customers, uh, and uh, hopefully we will add. Uh, we will become uh, one more continent. We'll add, and we'll become transcontinental uh, this year. You know, we are we are making the right things, and our current sales model. We are engaging more in, through system integrators and partners. And, yes, and Shafi, um, what about uh, constraints and headaches that you face in uh, running and growing the business? 
Sir, the biggest uh, challenge which we face is for enterprise business uh, as such. Uh, you know, you need the selling cycles are very long, uh, and you know the and the stakeholders who are involved because you have the business operations, the IT, the uh, the architecture teams. Uh, they would also look at the selling cycles is one big headache which we see because sometimes these large multi-billion dollar companies, you know, the whole process is in place at the final stage, the entire management or the whole the teams are changed. Then again, you start restart the cycle. But today we are well poised to make the right investments uh, and grow the business, build more brand. You will see us more, uh, you know, we are in, in taking initiatives on the digital side of uh, uh, the marketing also. And uh, you will see that is the biggest uh, challenge which we have the long selling cycle. Sorry, just to ask you what uh, Mr. Shastri had said and uh, to yeah. kind of build on, build on your own question. Uh, about 18, uh, until about 18 months ago, uh, we were also concerned that we probably did not have the wherewithal to kind of expand into the overseas territories, which is uh, ideally where we aspire to be because that's where uh, is the biggest bang for buck for, for uh, solutions uh, that we built. And yes. we've also seen from, uh, from past experience, we've seen that the margins that are afforded out of overseas contracts are far, far more than what we have ever experienced in India. Uh, and so uh, uh, we also, yeah, you would also have had been a part of uh, part of conversations with us, where we had said that we were probably scouting for partners who probably uh, could uh, could partner with us both financially and uh, strategically to kind of uh, uh, progress this endeavor. But uh, in the past 18 months, uh, thankfully, uh, uh, and I'm keeping my fingers and toes crossed. Uh, uh, because of uh, our own engagements with large system team integrators and large projects that we have been part with uh, in India, with, uh, with internal accruals itself, we have kind of shored up, uh, uh, if not if not the uh, money muscle, at least the mental confidence that uh, in the immediate and the short term we'll be able to kind of do it on our own. While uh, at this point in time, uh, we probably are not acting actively looking for uh, monetary participation. We still are open to uh, the participation, stakeholder participation in terms of people who can expand doors for us. And so uh, what, it, what the change that has happened from the past where, where we felt uh, uh, in our minds too that we were constrained for funds to expand, that, uh, that uh, I think uh, we are slowly putting uh, behind that. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Chirak Shah from EY. Please go ahead. Uh, Hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity, firstly, and congratulations on uh, the outstanding results. Also, thank you for the dividends that you've declared. Uh, my question was, while we've uh, spoken about the past strategic initiatives over the last two years, could you also share some insights over uh, the future initiatives and plans that the company has? Yeah, thanks, uh, Shah. The uh, you know, as Jayant just now illustrated, you know, we were looking at a financial and a strategic uh, partner, but at the moment we would want to look at you know engaging. We are already engaged with very large system integrators uh, uh, today uh, who are globally renowned. Uh, to, uh, so the, as the traction improves, we would want to see that, you know, we create joint go-to meetings with these people because they have a reach, they have the brand. And the whole thing which we are looking at, strategic partnerships, in the process, if something materially, if, you know, they would look at an equity or something like that, we will consider it as it comes. But the most critical aspect we'll be looking out is that our products and platform is a tried and tested and trusted by Fortune 500 companies globally, and uh, that it clearly proves that you know we have the right technology and we are in the right space, the right time. It's all today we need is uh, the reach 
the reach to scale up and grow this business and uh, primarily that will be uh, our uh, outlook and we will we are already engaged pretty pretty aggressively with uh, large system integrators we are talking to them on joint go to market joint things because there is definitely uh, a very positive traction coming Right. Thank you. Uh, to build to build on Shastri's comment uh, to your question, uh, while in the past we were uh, solely focused on very large uh, enterprise accounts, now uh, with with our low low, low code platform, we are also uh, uh, actively looking at uh, uh, the smaller businesses uh, uh, with uh, where the sales cycles are far uh, lower than what we have been experienced uh, to, so that uh, there is a separate. Uh, line of traction and another separate line of opportunity that we can uh, service. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that helps. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ajah Swahani, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, congratulations, uh, sir, and uh, to the entire team for an excellent performance. Uh, I'll keep my questions, uh, uh, you know, very specific, and if you could respond to them in a specific fashion in the interest of yeah. the other participants. Uh, so first is on the managed service deal. Um, uh, you know, the deal was truncated in the middle, and uh, the value went uh, that uh, that was likely to accrue over the tenure of the deal had, uh, you know, got a little, uh, uh, in terms of cash flow adjustments, was a uh, little... Uh, skewed so i just want to understand that is the same value of the trans the deal uh the the monies that were likely to accrue to us on a yearly basis along with the time period uh, on the similar lines is what we had discussed yeah thanks uh, just uh, for that you know just to let you know that uh, yes uh, we had lost uh, two years of revenue because of the whatever you know it was in public yeah. domain the supreme court verdict and a lot of changes in the thing we lost two years of revenue but now uh, you know the entire thing is back on track and uh, we are become we have become a complete critical aspect of it they have no other uh, even they sunset uh, their homegrown solutions uh, which they were using either to when we were uh, present so uh, currently, uh, surprisingly, we are uh, able to see that the digital onboarding is, uh, the volumes have not dropped and they are going as they are uh, uh, happening. Uh, and the similar thing is on this, because you know that they have a very large landline uh, presence. Yes. Uh, yes. And uh, that is also going well. But, uh, of course, the growth in numbers is not there because it's a transaction based uh, thing we are not seeing the uh, the growth what we want but there is not significant there is not much of a drop in the volumes what is happening so we are having a steady income from them uh, on the i have to be honest and candid with you there are some delays in the payments but we are receiving uh, it's a continuous that's the only customer where we are having some delays in our uh, collections but uh, uh, we are receiving some money, but there is part of it which is, it's a, like a cash flow rotation which is happening. A part of the chunk is always pending, which is there with them. Got it, sir. And sir, the ad revenue portion has started Thanks, from them sir, yes, well. I hope I've answered your question. Yes, sir. The ad revenue has started from them as well? Hello? Uh, hello. Are you able to hear me, sir? Oh, drop again. Uh, members of the management, uh, please confirm if you can hear us. Ladies and gentlemen, we lost the line of the management. Request you to please hold the line while we join them back for the call.
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for patiently waiting. We have the management back in the conference. I would request Mr. Lakhani to please repeat your question. Yeah, sir. Uh, you've answered my no, other question. I have a question. Uh, uh, just, uh, the, I hope you've heard my response, uh, or uh, should I repeat that? No, no, sir. We hear your response. I just wanted to, as a follow-up, uh, the ad revenue has also started trickling through, or not yet? Uh, yeah, that is a very good uh, question. Uh, what we have uh, learned is that because there was a part participation which was supposed to come from the operator also in a significant way. Uh, which, which has not happened and uh, uh, it is not, uh, uh, you know, it is not becoming viable for us to pursue that anymore. So we are not uh, uh, seeing uh, any revenue from that act, uh, that activity as, as much. Got it, sir. That's very helpful. And sir, uh, one understanding of our business was that, look, we sell the license and then, you know, uh, the small portion of it is in the form of annuity or change requests, etc. Now, uh, you mentioned, Anisha mentioned on the call that we're trying to, you know, uh, streamline this into a more predictable annuity sort of revenue. So what exactly uh, is the, how are you making this transition and what is the change uh, that is leading up to this? Yeah, see, what is happening is you know that the entire world is moving towards uh, uh, the side of uh, uh, everybody is moving towards cloud. They don't want to have the data centers and so on and so forth. So one of the things, uh, models which people look at is uh, are a transaction, per transaction model, or when it is, uh, when it's not, uh, Per transaction, typically large enterprises, uh, you know, are wary because their growth trajectory is high and they, their cash outflows will be uh, heavy. So in such cases, what they tell us is that the license, the annuity, the AMC, and the the uh, as you said, you know, the services, what the support services, operational support. So they bundle it all together and they make a monthly payment to us. So we have two models. One is monthly uh, fixed price, and the other is the per transaction price. That's how the entire thing is: the, the license, the, the services, the infrastructure. If at all we are providing infrastructure, in some cases, um, uh, like uh, in Europe and other places, um, they have been our client in in Europe where it is a private cloud. Uh, so you know if they they pay for the uh, the infra, but they pay for the license and AMC services on a monthly basis. So this is the two models for annuity and this predictability. So this is how uh, most of our new engagements we are looking at. Some of them uh, there is a definite shift also from the customer side to get into it. So we are able to convince them saying that you will also be able to predict your costs upfront. And that way they're appreciating this model. Got it, sir. And when they give you this monthly commitment, is there an underlying underwriting of some basic volumes that they commit to you, or uh, that is not a case? That is typically not a case, but most of our uh, enterprise customers are all, all on the growth side. Uh, sure. If you really look at uh, the revenues going forward, you know, 55% of our revenues will be coming from the annuity. Uh, 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 annuity side of our uh, business. Sure, sir. Thanks for that answer. I would urge you that uh, do not make the dividend payout. Use it to build sales and marketing and grow the pie uh, instead because the business is uh, inherently very profitable and uh, you know, I, 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 I mean, as, as I think we'd, we'd benefit far more if we can increase the traction of sales, which you can use to hire uh, expensive resources with the ca capital. Thank, thanks, Adan. I'll fall back in queue. Thank you very much. Sure, sure. Point taken. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Suresh Kumar from Alpha Investments. Please go ahead. Hello. Hello. Hello, hello, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sir. Uh, see, uh, uh, I see on the balance sheet that it's fifty-three point zero four crores in accounts receivables. So um, I'm just wondering how the company would be dealing with account receivables uh, moving forward. Okay. 
uh, just to as I'll let you know that uh, more than uh, more than fifty percent of that has already been uh, collected, uh, already been collected, and we have a pretty uh, healthy cash flows at the moment. Only thing is that we have have certain contracts with large customers where the payment terms themselves they are triple A rated, but the payment terms are one twenty days, ninety days. Uh, so that is what it is, but there is not. It is not a problem. We are very well, uh, 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 very uh, at the moment. Uh, as I mentioned to you, that more than uh, the 50% of that, uh, uh, more than 60% of that is already collected. Yes, sir. If, if more than 60% is collected, that's a, that's a good news, sir. That's yeah. Uh, uh, yeah that's uh, congratulations on that. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I I think uh, that that that's it. I don't have any further questions. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Prashant Kali, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello, Shashi. Congratulations for the fantastic result. And uh, Thank you. Thank I think you. you have a really professional team uh, running the company. I have observed one thing about the remuneration of the management. Uh, I can see that in last year, there was about 4% of the total revenue remunerated to two of the directors, 4%. And the standard is 1 or 2%. And let's say 2 or 2% is also acceptable. When it comes to 4%, uh, that sounds too much. And on top of that, I think uh, there is 5% uh, uh, for profit share also. Uh, that is okay. We can live with it. It's, uh, you guys are working hard. You must be awarded and rewarded accordingly. One thing I want to ask is that what was the reason for preferential shares to the promoters? Was it because of the need, the need of fund or was it because of raising the stake of the promoters uh, share holding stake? What was the reason for the preferential shares? It, uh, if you really look at it, it was to increase the uh, promoter shareholding because we are continuously accused of, um, you know, that we are, uh, though we are been in this business and our commitment is fully on for the last 20 years, we have made so many sacrifices, put uh, our personal assets and everything at stake, and we have done it. Uh, but still, the investor community feels that, uh, you know, we have to. Uh, uh, increase our stake. So what we have done is that yes, we have increased our remuneration so that uh, you know we don't have any other income. Uh, so we the same thing we are again putting back in the company to see that you know we increase our stake so that the in, the confidence in us goes up. That is uh, one way to look at it. But there is another or two options, two more options, uh, which gives confidence to the investors and which will really boost the value of the shares. If the owners go and buy from the open market, uh, that is a good idea. Other yeah, one is to buy back. These yeah. two options are. Uh, uh, sorry to interrupt you, Prashant. Your voice is breaking up. Uh, Prashant, may I request you to come in a better reception area? Your voice is breaking up, sir. Yeah, yeah. Now, now I am in better reception area. Shashi, I have one suggestion. I am not criticizing you because you guys are wise and been in, in, the, in uh, this business for a long time. Uh, there are two ways to increase, good ways to increase the stake. You buy from the open market or you buy back the shares so that your stake also goes up. We will be happy if the, uh, the stake of the promoters is high. Then that gives more confidence. So if you use these two means, then the, con the investors think that the management is not unduly rewarding themselves and they are getting rewarded along with the investors. Now, that is my request to you, sir. Sure, sure, sure. Point taken, well taken, and you will see some some of those actions also. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Milan Shah from Urmil Research Consultancy. Please go ahead. Hello. 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 Can you hear, sir? Yes, yes. But uh, the voice is not that very clear, uh, Mr. Shah. Hello. Uh, Mr. Shah, may I request you to come on the handset mode, sir? You're not very clear. It's a one minute, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, 
Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Uh, sorry, Mr. Chai, it is not very clear. Sir, your audio? Ah. We, we cannot hear you very well, sir. Ma'am, can you hear? Yes, this is better. Thank you. Please oh, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, I would request you to speak slowly, sir, so we can hear you better. Oh, oh, okay, okay, madam. Uh, uh, congratulations, sir. After some time, you start con call. And my request to continue was uh, uh, invest our touch in with company every three years, three months. And uh, Congress also, the Anisa Madam is joined in con call. And they have given very good presentation of company. My uh, question is, uh, uh, someone has uh, asked and you have replied it. I want to know intelligent assets under development, which is cost of 5.96 crore. For what is this amount is this spare, sir? Yeah, 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 yeah. So what we you know for uh, for about last uh, you know 15, 20, 20 years uh, we though we are a product and uh, product and platform company we never uh, capitalize any of our uh, the product development as this is towards that which we have done uh, to uh, towards the product development the new product development which we are putting in the thing. It is new product, but it is a de which is developing. Hello. Hello. Huh. It is a, a going to develop new product, but it is existing product, sir. Hello. Hello. Yeah. I've, uh, this, that is. Hello. Hello. We can yeah. hear you, uh, members of the management. Okay. Yeah, we can. We uh, I've answered it. I hope it is uh, fine. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, sir, one more question. The employee cost is going to down last uh, uh, three quarter. Is it going to continue or it is for uh, lockdown period? Is it? Well, I didn't understand. Uh, so can you repeat the question? Employee cost is uh, down since three uh, uh, quarters, three quarter. It is going to be decreased or stable, or because of it is a lockdown. So work from home is it on company? No, the employee cost will be going up. We are scaling up for uh, other uh, this uh, the new model of uh, managed uh, services approach. We will be increasing okay. our people, and uh, with this thing, we have a. In fact, in our difficult times, we had a lot of our employees who were taken up cut in our their salaries. We are compensating them better. So you will see an increase uh, in the expenses. But it will not significantly, it will offset, majority of it will get offset from, from the savings what we have towards COVID, like on the rent, uh, travel, uh, and other uh, conveyance expenses have come down drastically that we are uh, compensating largely from that savings to towards the employee benefits. Uh, so you will see a, uh, a marginal increase in the employee costs. Uh, and just to add to what Mr. Shastri has said, we will also continue investing in sales uh, people uh, uh, internationally. So that will also add to this cost. Oh, okay, good. Thank you and this is for our future. And I wish on call is going to be continued every quarter. Uh, Thank you. Uh, sir, we would want to, uh, uh, that is one thing we have yet to take a decision. We had taken a decision last year uh, you that we will do a call annuity, but if not annuity, we will do a six monthly the earnings call. Uh, because we would want the results to speak, not, uh, uh, you know, we, we would want, uh, you know, to, to be more focused on business. And I, I can assure you that you know we are available whenever you have anything. Thank you, thank you, sir. And good to hear you. And best luck. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pratik Shahanan, an individual investor. 
please go ahead uh, thank you for giving me an opportunity uh, am i audible sir you can hear me sir uh, uh, my question is already been answered by you uh, uh, point was raised by the earlier analyst that if you can you know uh, promoter can increase their stake from the open market or something like that then that will boost the confidence of investors and uh, other stakeholders so i was on that point and uh, i think you have already answered that and i would like to congratulate you for this uh, good results and best of luck for the future thank you thank you very much okay Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abhishek Kapoor, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my question is again on trade receivables, uh, which uh, uh, you have answered that you have received uh, 50% of what is outstanding, uh, which was on 31st of March. But my uh, question still remains: uh, If you see at the trade receivables, which were 53 crores, it is almost a uh, nine-month revenue of the company. And when you say uh, that receivables are due in 90 days or 120 days, we are saying it is almost 270 days. So uh, this does not match what you said actually: 90 days and 120 days. No, no. See, there are there is one customer where we are definitely uh, having a longer outstanding, as I mentioned. Apart from that, most of our collections are well within the 120 days. The fact that, as I mentioned, more than 60 percent of our collections uh, have uh, been, you know, from the out 31st March outstanding has already been collected itself is an evidence from that. and uh, if uh, is it okay for you to uh, divulge that out of this 53 crores how much is that particular customer the single customer yeah uh, the largest one uh, no we cannot uh, reveal it but you know we, we can you know we if you would want to have a personal call we can uh, do that it is not very significant okay okay it is not significant yeah all right thank you very much Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sumit Kothari, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello, Mr. Shastri. Uh, hope you're doing well. Congratulations for a great set of numbers. Uh, my question is regarding the other expenditures that we see. I mean, can we get get a break up of this seven and a half crores that we have incurred in uh, Q4? the you know these are related to the uh, the other expenses are related to advertisement statutory audit fees uh, business promotion and you know what we have all directors remuneration uh, professional services what we have also done is that for one of our large engagement we had to hire a lot of uh contract uh, uh, employees that is the chartered accountants and all of those we have uh, right. hired about close to 30 plus uh, or so chartered accountants uh, for delivering the project that is also a part of that uh, of course the travel expenses come down uh, there are uh, that those are the significant uh, 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 costs so just to understand the trend will it always be something like 20 22% of the revenue or it might be dependent of the revenue and might change uh, your voice is uh, breaking uh, so much no i was saying that uh, is it always a percentage of revenue hello? or 20 22% uh, hello okay, can you hear me can no i i lost you completely we we you we, we, we your voice was breaking uh is it better now can you hear me yeah yeah, yeah much better uh, so what i was saying is that i see that it's around 20 22% as a percentage of revenue it is always going to be this number or is it going to change on a quarter to quarter basis the other expenditure that is uh, it will be in and around that the other expenses point is that you know we are also you know trying to uh, hire a uh, lot of uh, you know uh, the professional consultants even for our uh, business development senior people uh, as consultants so we right. will be in, in around that and uh, since we are looking for opportunities in the uh, global markets and 
Indians always had higher margins in the uh, international business. So, I mean, can we expect the margins to go up higher or will it be around the same levels of around 28-30 percent? Uh, we are working towards improving it, as you know that you know, the idea is, uh, you know, we have changed our team in the U.S. We've got uh-huh. aggressive people. We are hoping right. that, uh, you know, they will produce this. America happens and uh, uh, we are, you know, we will, you will see this company in a totally different league uh, altogether. Right. Right. And what is the number of sales people we have for the U.S. and the uh, Europe uh, region? Maybe if you can give any ballpark number, sales people. To... Currently, we have. Uh, see, the thing is that we, as an organization itself, we don't have too many sales people. We have uh, yeah. a lot of pre-sale consulting people because what happens is, you know, it is not a number of feet on the street. It is uh, what is required. It is on the pilots, the POCs. The pre-sale support is very high. That is about close to uh, 26, 28 people are there on the pre-sale side. On the sales side, we have about 9, 10, um, 10 of them. So as bunched together, you know, uh, that's the number. Uh, globally, we have about 9 sales people. Okay, great. Uh, thanks for answering my question. Hello. Hello. Thank you. Uh, so I, we can hear Hello. you. I hope you can. Sir, can you hear me? Ladies and gentlemen, request you to please stay connected while we check the line for the management. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for patiently waiting. We have the management connected now back in the call. We'll move to the hey, next question. We're so sorry for uh, the polycom drop. These systems have not been used in a year and a half, and I think they're getting rusty sitting at office. Thank you, ma'am. The next question is from the line of Arjun Balakrishnan, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thanks for the opportunity, and uh, I must confess I'm quite new to this company, uh, quite recently uh, invested. Uh, so, uh, pardon me if the questions are quite basic. So, can you let can you tell me whether the, the products that you sell, your product, is it licensed for a lifetime, a perpetual license, or is it a lease based model? You know, we we uh, mostly it is uh, you know the early uh, deals which we had done were all perpetual, but now we are moving onto transaction model and uh, uh, annuity models uh, currently. So uh, we are also having some engagements which are on growth based uh, licenses. So the more number of CTNs or the call trunk number increases the 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 you know based on it's a growth license if the more they add the customer base that much more licenses which we get year on year so the, we have what the, the early most of the early deals which we did we had no choice but to agree to perpetual license and okay thank you and uh, just to follow up on that so when i see the historical revenues it's been a bit inconsistent and that's typical of a product company, I understand. But because you're shifting this model from perpetual to, you know, more transactions, can we expect a bit more consistency on the revenue uh, quarter quarter on quarter? Or is it going to be still our expectation should be let's look at it year on year and not quarter on quarter? It would take, uh, uh, you will see that improvement from last year to this year, uh, uh, Mr. Balaji. The uh, the uh, uh, next year onwards, it further it will be improvable, improved and predictable. But you will see some improvement this year, uh, definitely. 
for now you okay. i would uh, urge you all to look at it uh, year on year but uh, definitely yeah, there is yeah. improvement understand understand and a couple of last questions uh, one thing about the dividend i see you in increasing the dividend so normally that viewed positively but because let's uh, you know agree that we are a smallish company so don't you think it's wiser to kind of not pay any dividend and and reinvest no, no, into the into the sales the and marketing was, it was just to uh, the idea was that there was a, a lot of uh, expectations and cry from a lot of other investors that you never pay dividend uh, uh, never pay dividend when it's such a small equity your the impact is not significant why don't you give a goodwill thing there are been different opinions but i think you know i take your advice uh, it, it is we also personally feel it is prudent to to put that in sales and marketing going forward Yeah, considering the taxes or dividends nowadays, it has no meaning in my view to yeah. give dividends. Anyway, so let's put that aside. Last question, because you know, I think we have a decently good product, a uh, great product. Have you ever thought of going a slightly riskier proposition of raising more debt and and increasing our bandwidth, you know, to grow faster? Uh, or uh, because. that is always a problem for a smaller company right to to grow to get the bandwidth uh, because cash gets you more cash but is there any plan for somehow raising more capital uh, at the moment we don't have uh, any plan sir uh, with the given uh, cash flows given this thing we are looking at some decent growth but uh, if you would want to you know because the biggest problem which we have in our business is long selling cycle so debt and long cycles uh, you know it it was we felt it you know it is though when it is required we had taken uh, debt but uh, okay understand the moment okay understand yeah Okay, understand. And finally, uh, bookkeeping question. I think somebody would have asked. And Arjun, and Arjun, what uh, Arjun, what are the experiences? Yeah. Also, sorry, but Jayant here. I'm more of uh, Shakti's colleague. Uh, our experience also in the past have been that uh, uh, the unfortunate, uh, the uh, uh, Vijay Malia incident kind of rub off on the smaller uh, uh, aspirants <laughs> for uh, <laughs> bank capital. They are yeah, okay. they they okay, tend to be expected. Yeah, they tend to look at us kind of uh, far more keenly than uh, they ever did in the past, I guess. And uh, just to add to what Jen said, you know, the small uh, debt which we have, I think we have about how much now? One crore, one point six six crore debt. That itself, we have hundred. I mean, that could be nuisance value of servicing that debt is far more than uh, the benefit. Yeah, I understand. And I, I just curious to know what your view was. And final question is. Regarding your stakes in the company, maybe there is some rules regarding what categorizes as promoter and non-promoter. But if you really put all the stakeholders who have skin in the game, what is the total promoter? Not promoter, but the the yeah, you know, I think giant stake I see yeah, as non-promoter. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, between us, it is coming to twenty five point six and employees put together, it's about nine thirty three thirty four percent is what it comes to. It's a good question. And after the warrants, uh, it will go up after to uh, it will go to thirty-seven, thirty-eight. So okay, so it's close to forty. That's fine. That's healthy. Okay, thank you. That's it. Thanks, thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anil Kumar, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, uh, first, let me congratulate. the management for outstanding performance consecutive results declared and uh, i have one uh, uh, i've been observing this company in and as an individual investor for a long time and i just want one uh, one question is there any technolo- technological breakthrough or something can anybody explain this any any advancement in technology because Today, world is moving towards technology. Yeah, that's a very good question, Mr. Anil. The thing is that uh, if you really look at the paradigm of uh, you know the the number of it was all people driven coding was people driven, 
uh, we have invested in strategic this thing we are getting into you know, artificial intelligence ai uh, on the low code side of our platform low code is the next big thing which is predicted uh by the analyst and everywhere and you can see that happening anisha i would you want to add sure. uh mr anil just to build yeah. on what mr shastri said just like how when cloud came in that was a big fad and it completely you know disrupted how uh, storage was done right uh, and that's the same case with low code uh, infra uh, it disrupted the infra market and that's the same case with low code um in fact if you read the gartner forest etc report uh they they say that more than 60% of all app development worldwide will move on to low code platforms um and uh, we made the right calls at the right time made the right investments at the right time into into that space and we continue to grow our low code uh, offering uh, we leverage it ourselves as well we are also uh, now seeing our customers uh, benefit from it and uh, that is one very strategic initiative that we have taken that uh, we are very very sure will pay off so uh, just to build on what uh, adisha and shafi have said uh, sir uh, that, uh, as i also stated uh, uh, a little earlier in the conversation uh, what this also opens for us is uh, a new a new market that we can service uh, so we we no longer will be kind of restricted uh, restricting ourselves to large enterprise accounts where we are uh, while uh, the dividends are there over a long term uh, period uh, but uh, for 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 us we would like uh, shorter uh, sales cycles and uh, quicker uh, cash cycles and this the, the new segments of small, addressing smaller businesses through our low code platform will afford us that opportunity oh, um, yeah thanks for the information and i wish uh, the supplier for coming here because the future is technology and uh, you are one of the uh, few companies or products companies in this country all the best thank you sir Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amit Gauri, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Oh, uh, thank you. First of all, congratulations to the management for good set of results. Uh, sir, my question is uh, related to an uh, related to an announcement of uh, of a contract called Mission Critical Services. Uh, can you please uh, uh, guide us to the contract value or the execution periods? Uh, related to that particular contract sir uh, unfortunately we have a confidential uh, nda agreement we can't reveal the name and the uh, contract uh, size uh, sir uh, i hope you will appreciate uh, uh, the right. yeah okay but any execution any, any information if you can uh, share with us no if we not the name or the, the value we are, we are engaged in the uh, in the contract fully deeply engaged and the contract uh, implementation is going on and uh, uh, and it is definitely of a lot of prestige and pride to us in terms of the national importance it carries so has the execution started or uh, yeah yeah it execution has started so uh, what i can add uh, to what shastri uh, has said is that like over the last two years uh most of our contracts are uh, annuity uh, are contracts where we can see a predictable annuity over uh, a period of time and so this uh, so all our current engage all our new engagements add to that factor of predictability that all of you are looking uh, for from uh, your company all right and one more thing uh, can you please also guide us uh, if uh, what are any number of clients added since last one year or uh, what is the current pipeline of sales yeah we have added about four uh, you know we have added in insurance we have added uh, uh, in uh, banking, uh, banking uh, uh, utilities and government uh, through uh, system integrators uh, but all it put together it, it would be about four to five customers Okay. and our business is such where uh, uh, up until now our business has always been where uh, uh, you know a volume of sales is not as much but what what we add in terms of uh, to to the top line uh, is uh, significant from each of those what happens yeah. is that you know being enterprise customers you know, we have also put a strategy uh, together to see that 
we deliver more value to our existing customers because you as you must have seen we have very marquee uh, names in our list of customers what in 500 so we are increasing through this low code and this thing we are increasing our value proposition to our clients so always it is easier to engage with an existing satisfied customer uh, uh, than go for a new hunting customer so we put a very clear strategy this year to see that we increase our uh, value to our existing customers and in- thereby increase our wallet share right and and uh, uh, just as an additional data point because most of, most of our uh, most of uh, you uh, and even uh, we are also uh, we fault ourselves also on that data point which is historical which we, we tend to call ourselves a telecom focused company but we we were a telecom focused company but if you look at our uh, a client mix today but uh, you can call us a telecom insurance and banking company that we have, uh, and uh, uh, almost uh, across uh, in india uh, we address we address that market right, right. thank you that's all thank you the next question is from the line of prithik khanna an individual investor please go ahead yeah uh, thank you for the opportunity uh, so congratulations on uh, the result uh, most of my questions have been answered but i just want to know one thing uh, whether you all are involved in customer acquisition or is it just customer onboarding and management and like other similar services but uh, what do you mean by acquisition i mean like you all acquire the customers like something similar to what apple does no we don't we are customer see we help our customers uh, acquire their customers uh, that is uh, what we do and after acquire, acquiring customers we help them engage with them we help them uh, send their uh, required bills payments uh, and other uh, you know after uh, the support services which they are required for okay got it yeah, yeah thank you so much thank thank you The next question is from the line of Suresh Kumar from Alpha Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, 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 even though revenue growth have been decent, uh, like you know, in terms of growth, uh, when you compare it with other IT companies, uh, the growth is a bit uh, sluggish, I would say, when compared to the high growth IT companies. So I'm just yeah. wondering if. Uh, if there was a target of 150 crore revenue set in the next two years time what would the company be doing differently in order to achieve that revenue that's a brilliant uh, very good question uh, as we said that you know we are uh, three big things initiatives one is that we are uh, taking up uh, next two years uh, we are also uh, with the support of low code we are uh, looking at taking up large uh, projects whether it is government or uh, thing in the digital transformation area which could uh, uh, be of value of 5 to 10 million dollars um, a single uh, deal uh, uh, so that is one uh, thing plus as we said that you know we are increasing our depth and breadth uh, of our uh, value to our existing customers the third thing is that penetrating having very close ties with system integrators and partners uh, 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 that these are the three things which will get us where we would want to be definitely uh, that you know uh, we, uh, that these are the things which which we are uh, doing and also increase our footprint in uh, in you know we are looking at opening up uh, australia new zealand uh, this year based on some and if there is any new we are doing currently mostly remotely yeah yes yes but most definitely the results are commendable and satisfactory sir a good job Thank and you. Thank um, you. i'm i'm and i'm wondering like you have the small debt of 1.3 crore but you have got 14 uh, crore cash on the balance sheet why not pay off that small debt absolutely we are we are threatening we are threatening the bankers that we'll do it if they stop being a nuisance to us <laughs> yes sir uh, and, and 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 to to reach 
that so if you can achieve the growth trajectory it will all be well well on the uh, uh, salary for all the directors and uh, and the management because it takes a lot of effort to run a company and get to that sort of trajectory oh. you are telling me sir <laughs> We've seen the worst times. We really went through a lot of roller coaster rides. Being a product, I know, it, I know. It, it, it needs a lot of deep pockets and uh, marketing reach, a lot of innovation, money into innovation. We have to always be at the cutting edge of technology. And you know, being a smaller company, you know, we have to manage employee motivation, challenge, attract talent. All these. And, and thank you very much, uh, sir, for your uh, input. No, 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 no problem. So, so my lighter, suggestion. On a lighter vein, Suresh, uh, huh? uh, the, on a lighter vein, the reason why we held back uh, paying back a debt was because uh, until recently we were working uh, towards acquiring another, uh, the same uh, customer as our own clients, which we have done now. Now we have no mm -hmm. problem in paying back that debt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sir. Okay, sir. No, no problem. Uh, I, I wish we reach a higher growth trajectory when it comes to sales. And I think that's the only thing lacking. And my other sort of small concern is, sir, uh, consistently in the market, like if Q1 is better than Q2 result and Q2 is, uh, and Q3 is better than Q2 result and, and Q4 result is better than Q3, that will have a positive impact uh, on the stock. Whereas now what I'm seeing here is, uh, of course, I can't blame you. It's the sales cycle. Uh, most of the revenue is sort of uh, concentrated in the quarter four. And then once we go to quarter one, uh, the revenues are historically, you know, they have been relatively less. And as a result, in my view, that's the reason why the stock is not doing as good as it should. Because if you look at the PE, it's around uh, uh, 10 times earnings, which is uh, relatively less compared to what other companies are trading in the market. So, sir, we, will, we are, as we said, you know, we are reconstructing our contracts. We hope to improve that. Uh, and uh, uh, and you will see them. Uh, you will uh, see uh, some change this year. Okay, sir. Okay, thank you. That's it, sir. For, uh, uh, for for your future prospects. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Arjun Balakrishnan, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yes, sorry, this is a follow-up one. I'm not sure how can, whether you can answer it because lately there's been news on one of your uh, publicly known project, publicly I don't know, about a glitch in the website. You know what I mean, right? So <laughs> is that related to us or is it related to the SI? Uh, and I'm okay if you can't answer it because it's, it's something to do. But if you can, or if you can give us an idea, about Arjun, Arjun, uh, Arjun, for, uh, for, for Arjun, for the benefit of all of us Indians, let's hope that that glitch is uh, sorted out soon. Yeah, yeah. we are not uh, directly involved, but uh, 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 let, let's hope that all of us are able to use that website sooner. And thanks all the best for the future. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Prashant Kale, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, Shastriji, I have uh, one suggestion. We have six to seven people as a global sales team, and then there are like, let's say, 20 people supporting them for pre sales. Right? So, and if we want to reach increase our global reach and employ quite a lot of sales people globally, that will add a lot of fixed cost and the returns will come very late. Uh, is it possible to employ, because there are uh, hundreds of thousands of skilled IT engineers all over the globe, is it possible to employ, identify some of them and employ them as a freelance salespeople? If they sell, they get commission. If they don't sell, they don't get nothing. By doing that, we will not have fixed cost, and we will only have cost if we get sales. Is that possible? Yeah, it's a very good question. Uh, um, uh, I, I didn't get your name. I'm sorry. Prashant Kale. Prashant, Prashant Kale. Uh, uh, Mr. Prashant, it is a, a very good question. So what we are doing in uh, in increasing our sales is that you must have heard in my one of the expenses which we spoke of. There are these enterprise sales is related to it is not a simple sale. It, it it requires a whole skill set what is required. 
So there are people today who work as very senior positions like CIOs, CTOs of large enterprises whom, uh, who have taken uh, voluntary retirement or they've started their own consulting firms. So we are engaging with those consultants as one aspect of it. The second aspect, you're absolutely right. So, you know, an individual cannot sell, but a partner model where already they have some existing customers. So we are looking at developing partners where it is revenue share and profit sharing kind of a model. The third thing which we are trying to do uh, is engage more deeply with the system integrators. Typically, system integrators, either two used to be that people used to only come when there was the opportunity and uh, 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 for them to work with us. Now, we are looking at proactively engaging with them, trying to work, try to go to market strategies and other things. I hope I've answered, Mr. Prati. Yeah, you, you have. You have answered it fairly well. Uh, but um, what I have observed is that uh, Indian people are smart. If you train them a bit, maybe you can try on, on a pilot basis on smaller in smaller countries where it's not possible to employ a full-time uh, salesperson. But if you give them a little bit of training, let's say five to ten hours of training, and try a pilot for smaller countries, and let's say... Uh, and deploy them, identify the customers yourself and deploy them, okay, contact this company and switch in for this product. So probably that will help you if it works or not. It's just a suggestion. Sure, other, sure. other thing is I that... You absolutely, Prashant ji, I mean, I mean, your point is well taken and in fact it has been, uh, it has been on our radar too. But uh, you will also appreciate and acknowledge that, I mean, hiring, hiring is one of the most challenging, hiring the right person is one of the most challenging uh, <laughs> uh, tasks for any, for any uh, company. And, and as, yeah. as a partner and a stakeholder in our business, uh, we, uh, we'd be open if, if, if you can also refer uh, names that who you believe uh, we can get in touch with. We'll be happy to have a conversation with uh, anybody. Uh, okay, I have a few contacts in Europe. I can suggest yeah. for the small country, Sweden, Norway, Finland. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Other thing, I had one suggestion is that there are lots of e-commerce companies and uh, chain shops in India, like Dmart and all those things. Are we planning to pour into that area and help them to acquire uh, their customers and register their customers? Because their turnaround is quite, quite a customer turning turning is quite high. So, uh, is there any plan? Have you have you looked into it? No, we have not looked into it, uh, uh, but we will uh, uh, consider your suggestion and explore uh, that, that vertical also. A smaller brands, like let's say Indian Terrain is a Chennai based company, smaller brands. They are small brands, they don't have IT expertise. They have now opened their uh, online shop. Like previously, they were in uh, uh, all the big shopping chains like Shop for Shop Shop and all those things. But now they have opened their own shop. Uh, online shop. Similarly, Sri Leather is a Kolkata-based company, a small company having 30, 40 shops. But now they are selling shoes left, right, and center online. Right? Okay. So these types of small brands who are weak no. in IT, probably if we target them and then help them to acquire customers and run their um, you know, back-end things, uh, that could be the one location where, because these people are family-owned businesses, not very good at IT. Okay. Sure, we'll, we'll, that's a good input. We will consider that. Uh... Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shiv Kumar, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Shiv Kumar, your line is in the talk mode. You may go ahead with your question. Uh, hello, am I audible? Yes, you yes, are. Yes. Uh, so, uh, congratulations. Uh, it's a long time coming. Uh, I've been an investor for uh, now four years. Uh, through the, I think, pain and uh, uh, thanks for the great set of numbers. Hopefully, we get to improve from here. Uh, a few questions. And firstly, uh, a suggestion. Uh, can we release the results a little bit early? Because um, of all stocks, I always look for interim results. It always comes at the fag end of the quarter. So, um, if we could, uh, you know, release it earlier, um, it would be awesome. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, yeah. 
So the other thing is, I think uh, a couple of years before in, in a con call, we talked about the GDPR opportunity in Europe. Um, any idea how is that progressing? Is our, from the, uh, how is that done? Uh, the point is now that that uh, got completely crowded, uh, sir. That they completely crowded and uh, uh, market. So we have, uh, and also what is people are looking at is they are not looking at buying an IP to implement GDPR. They would want manpower, people, resources to do that. So we have not, uh, you know, continued to pursue in that uh, direction. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, the, my next question is like, uh, I, um, we have a customer in uh, US, right? I think uh, uh, we, which we implemented a SaaS platform. Now, um, what is the feedback on that platform? And have we done similar rollouts for any of the customers? No, we have. We were after that customer. We did not have a success uh, there in the U.S. That's why I, I, you must have heard me. We have changed our team there. Uh, we are getting uh, so. Uh, we hope to see some good traction this year. Uh, uh, yeah, just uh, uh, just to kind of uh, address that differently, the, the client continues to be uh, 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 with us and is a very happy user of our solution. But uh, the, our aspirations for that market on the strength of the, those relationships, I mean, it did not take off the way uh, we aspired it to, uh, to do. And so uh, what Shakti has stated is about the change in team and people. Uh, okay, thanks. Um, so uh, when we talk about the pipeline for the future, uh, uh, anything, uh, what is the pipeline size or quantum with respect to direct involvement other than integration with SI? The SaaS platform model. So we are having a decent pipeline, sir. Uh, uh, decent pipe pipeline to give us uh, what we are targeting to do. Uh, both on the system integrator side, we are working on some uh, good uh, couple of opportunities, uh, and on the direct side also, we are working on uh, a lot of them. The, on the direct side, we have more uh, on the on the domestic front. Uh, whereas the uh, system integrator side, you know, we are uh, engaged with them on overseas opportunity. Okay. Okay, sir. Uh, thank you. My last question. Sir, do we have any, like, uh, targets for 2025, say, vision 2025, 2030? That's a, that's a very nice way, sir, of asking for a forward projection. We do have them internally. Uh, we just want to be cautious uh, about uh, uh, about speaking about them publicly because uh, once bitten twice shy. Um, so uh, we are working towards those internally, and uh, we can assure you of that. You see a significant growth. Yeah, uh, see, uh, I'm sure I want like any like you know, most others uh, want an Indian product company to be hugely successful. I didn't uh, not always ask on revenue projection, but uh, you know and some targets which I suppose. Uh, we want to be every country or, you know, so many customers or uh, metrics which, uh, you know, indicate that we are really, the product is globally. See, the reason why I ask is also because though the product is excellent and the, I think some of the Indian companies are even bigger than U.S. companies, right? The number of communications customers. I think this is uh, the telco is largest than any any uh, company in the world. But since we are not, not able to crack uh uh, you know the literate to US or markets. Yes, uh, thinking. Sir, uh, we are this year. We are pretty focused to see that America so happens for us. Um, we are looking at uh, you know one of the things probably the learning lesson was we tried to go directly uh, in the US in the last in the past. Directly, we have realized that. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a tough call. So we are looking at partners, system integrators, uh, through whom we would want to engage with the customers. Because, you know, that's a, a totally a different uh, market for uh, approach. Uh, it, it can happen as far as uh, uh, the, uh, uh, these 
sales perspective is concerned this we hope uh, that uh, this there you are very right you know, we are increasing uh, we will we would also want to become we are across four continents we want to become transnational transcontinental uh, and uh, we would want to see that we definitely increase and add with as many new customers as as we go along um and the first significant thing was what we did was that you know as uh, anisha mentioned uh, we have uh, increased our vertical mix quite a lot um, uh, from you know into sort of being just a telecom vertical focus we have now becoming telecom bfsi also we have uh, cracked uh, one uh, utilities uh, uh, breakthrough which we would want to replicate globally similarly you know we, we are also looking at you know medium and large uh, projects of uh, for the digital transformation using the low code platform uh sure sir okay my last uh, um, suggestion or input uh, i, I uh, think uh, uh, yes sir sir i would what i would uh, uh, urge you is that you know you could always Uh, want to spend some time understand deeper things about our product our company or this thing i would uh, urge you to uh, make a visit i'm sure there are many others who are who would be over on the call just to give them an opportunity already we have crossed 30 minutes beyond our scheduled time uh appreciate it sir it's been some time so yeah i think most people are excited to do yeah no problem sir thanks No, you you always Just want one to one welcome. You are always welcome to have a a, a personal uh, call to understand more deeper, sir. Sure, sir. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take one last question, for, which is from the line of Abhishek Kapoor, an individual investor. Please go ahead. uh sir it's not a question it's just a request if you can uh, on quarterly basis if you can reveal the number of clients we have and addition and uh, uh, deletion and total balance sure 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 we'll do that right thank you thank you thank you very much thank you ladies and gentlemen that was the last question for today i now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments thank you very much everyone for uh, taking your precious time to uh, know about your company uh, we are uh, committed we have a excellent team we have great technology uh, product and we, we will uh, ensure that we do give you give the best to see that this your company grows further thank you very much Thank you. On behalf of Intense Technologies Limited, that concludes this conference. So thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.